All right, finally, we have some decent time to get into the headlines. From Mediaite.com, top JP Morgan investment officer, it will take 10 to 12 years for U.S. employment levels to return. JP Morgan Chief Investment Officer Bob Michelle predicted it will take 10 to 12 years after the pandemic for U.S. employment to get back to its pre coronavirus level, insisting it won't be as simple as turning the economy back on. No, it's not that simple. It's going to take years or longer to get back to where we are, where or or where we were. When he said on Bloomberg, when asked if reopening would be as simple as turning on the lights, he noted that there was a huge error when predicting unemployment numbers as millions of Americans are losing their jobs amid the pandemic. He then compared unemployment rates during the coronavirus outbreak to the 2008 financial crisis. Quote, when you look at the Congressional Budget Office forecast for the end of 21, they have unemployment at 9%. So sure, materially better than where we're going to peak in the high teens. But during the peak of the financial crisis, unemployment hit 10%. So even looking out a year and a half from now, we're still going to be roughly where we were at the peak of the financial crisis. Now, this is really scary. And and I, I want people to really pay attention to this one important metric. There are a lot of bigger numbers to get lost in around coronaphobia, right? We have the $6 trillion in liquidity. We have the death tolls, we alleged and, and case counts, and uh, the stimulus spending at the state level, the money going from the federal government, for patient, the incentive to over-report cases, all of these things. But the crux of this crisis is forced unemployment. That's what we have. You know, I call this the coronaphobia crisis because the virus is not the crisis, it's the fear. And that's not even really an accurate term either. It's a government-induced forced unemployment crisis where entire sectors of the economy were just literally wiped out. Sorry, no bars, no restaurants, no strip clubs, no salons, done. Poof, just like that, because government says so, you're not in business anymore. Now, there is an effort right now to give every single American $2,000 a month. And this is, you know, pretty scary when you think about what this means is a concentration of government power. And I'm not scared that we are going to be somehow unable to take care of each other, that there's going to be blood in the streets, or that we're going to see food shortages or riots or mass starvation. No, not in America. In some countries, though, yeah, where they're not as developed as we are, where they're not as stable as we are, where even police civilian relationships aren't as good, as shitty as they may seem at times here in the United States, there are countries where it is way worse. We've seen cases of people being beaten in the streets in India and in Thailand and Pakistan. All over the world, there are people in way worse situations. And we are going to feel those consequences here in the United States as well. The government won't let people starve. The government cares about you the same way a rancher cares about his cattle. He will milk you to death if he wants. He will slaughter you when he feels like it. But yes, he still wants to protect his good little wage slave tax cattle. So this is from uh, the U.S. Sun, skipping ahead, the sun.com. Payday, new bill could give Americans $2,000 monthly coronavirus stimulus checks for up to 90 days after pandemic. But there is no after the pandemic, Adam. I hear you cry. Yes, that's right. There isn't. 90 days after the pandemic is over. Here we go, another inch deeper into the Chinese finger trap of statism, of socialism. Did I say Chinese finger trap? Uh, yeah. Nice little synchronicity there, don't you think? 
Three Democratic senators have pitched the Monthly Economic Crisis Support Act, which will be released on Friday. The act is being pitched by Senators Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Ed Markey if the legislation is passed. Americans who make less than $120,000 a year would receive a monthly check of $2,000. Married couples who file their taxes together would receive $4,000 and $2,000 would be provided for each child of the three. Now, some people, especially after hearing Justin Amash make the case for this legislation inadvertently, uh, not directly to this, I should say indirectly, not inadvertently. I'm sure you meant what he was saying. That's not what I meant what I was saying. Uh, no, but he, he uh, indirectly was uh, promoting this in one of his recent interviews, saying that the government should give people $2,000 a month until this is over. Well, there are some problems with this. And then you might say, well, Adam, this money's been stolen from us. We should get it back. Not like this. No, the way we get it back is actually taking it all back through localization, through demanding that everything that has been stolen from us be returned. Not that we be put on the dole. Not that we be granted an allowance by government. Not that we become dependent children to this system. And I, I've said this before about the, the, the forms. Like, well, okay, if you make less than $120,000, well, guess what? Now we're going to see a bunch of tax fraud from people making $121,000 a year trying to discount or, or manipulate that to qualify for this next handout. But where does this handout come from? It comes from us. The government is not a magical money fountain. All they can do is create mechanisms through their monetary system and redistribution of wealth that redirect goods and services where they want to go. What they're saying now is they want to go to more people who are not working, who they are preventing from working. Right. And I said I've said this is the typical, as Harry Brown would say, government gives uh, breaks your leg, then gives you a crutch and says, see, if it wasn't for government, you wouldn't be able to walk. But it's not that bad. It's not like the leg is broken. Now, this story from J.P. Morgan's uh, Bob Michelle saying that we're, we're going to have 10 to 12 years. I, I think that's actually realistic in terms of if nothing changes, if everything else holds constant. So one other, another quote from him in the story, one of the things we did was to just predict a downdraft in the second quarter, somewhere around 10%, so call it 38 to 40% annualized and say that's the trough, and then start this journey back up to the long-term trend rate. To catch up to the long-term trend rate that's been at place, call it 1.5% pre-crisis. To fill that output gap, we estimate it will take 10 to 12 years. Michelle noted that it took the U.S. economy eight and a half years to reach the long-term trend line following the financial crisis, so he was confident in his predictions. Now, I'm more optimistic. I think we're on the verge of too many breakthroughs. There are too many incredible advances on the horizon where the internet is rendering government obsolete, where just the uberization of everything, as, as Gary Johnson would have said, uh, reduces the need for government licensing, for brick and mortar stores. If they're scaring us out of meeting in person, we adapt, improvise, and overcome. We innovate our way out of every crisis. That's what humanity does. That's how we march onward and continue to get better as a human family, a global human family, every single day. So, what is this going to do? If the government passes this bill, first of all, I guarantee Amash will not get his fantasy that government will somehow be able to distribute these checks fairly and equally and in a timely manner and not leave out homeless people and not leave out the really needy people who can't actually plug into the banking system. But they're not going to be people who take advantage. There's not going to be massive fraud. The libertarian answer to this whole thing is not a do this or do that, but stop the violence. Stop, the, get rid of the coercive solutions. Where does this money come from? It comes from you. They are stealing from you and giving it back to you. You really think this is sustainable? Or they're stealing from working people to give to non-working people. If you can't make $120,000 a year in this country, when you get $2,000 a month for not working, there's going to be a lot of people not working. 
this i, I mean I, I, the collapsitarian in me is kind of excited about this right this this could be the runaway inflation spark this could be the the final step because if you if if, if this is how they go that you're going to have the government all right i got the prediction here if this goes through and and it's just now if it ends 90 days after the and when is after the pandemic well there's been mutations there's a new virus that's getting rather we did whatever i don't think this goes away and it's funny i quoted ronald reagan on twitter to refute this because there's this great quote from ronald reagan that says that the closest thing humanity has ever experienced to eternal life is a government program <laughs> yep yep there there you go uh that's why it's so hard to shrink government it's so easy to grow it in why it's, it metastasizes like a cancer so if we get into this world if, if america or this country goes into this uh, ubi th like this and it's a hundred see actually this is worse than ubi because ubi goes to everybody working or not you don't lose it if you start making money this is worse this is incentivized removal from the workforce this is paying people who could work to not work because two thousand dollars a month twenty four thousand dollars a year you can you can live very comfortably or at least right now in the united states on twenty four thousand dollars a year i mean i was in the marines my standard of comfort might be lower than i live you know but I mean, I bought land. I, yeah, okay. I'm I'm a little more rugged than the average American that way. I get. But no, seriously, twenty four thousand dollars, twenty four thousand dollars a year, two thousand dollars a month per for person, one person. Right? That's per person, yeah. right? A, a, a couple married couples who file taxes together, four thousand, and two thousand would be provided for each child up to three. But here's the funny thing: you're going to see if this goes through, all of a sudden you have this weird distortion of human reproduction. I mean, already we know the welfare state generally incentivizes having kids, right? And, and, it, and I know the welfare queen, you know, the myth in a lot of ways, and all that, but we do incentivize and subsidize making babies. But what if we cap it at three in this way? And it's like, oh, we're going to have three and then we're going to stop. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna be, you're going to see like a little distortion in the, in the statistical. They're going to be a lot less fourth children's out there in these families. Uh, that we have in this era of coronita babies conceived during coronaphobia season. So what's going to happen? Here's here's the big prediction: is that if we go this way, you're going to see a bifurcation of the economy that is a split into two distinct parts. You're going to have the dollar economy, and then you're going to have the real economy with crypto and metals and other alternative currencies that aren't traceable or trackable. You're going to have a barter economy on the side of this and it is only the suckers who are like yeah i'll keep working for one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year what is, what is by the way if you're working and it says if you make less than one hundred twenty thousand after taxes what does that actually come out to now after all the taxes we know it's about 50 percent right Absolutely. now actual taxes that that you're not paying with your two thousand dollars a month also okay maybe 30 40 percent something like that whatever it is but but even if it's only 25 percent or say say it's say it's 30 percent a quarter you take this down out it's ninety thousand. why would you why would you do that why would you work so that you can and this is on top of every other government program so that you could pay for two people who just can't get a job and see what this does now it's not just that the cure is here is worse than the disease, but it delays the healing. The healing is, yeah, and, and hypothetically, you know, we all go, well, okay, people stop working, let them go back to work, everything goes back to normal. It's not, it doesn't work that way, right? But the healing that we could be going through right now, and in terms of the long term adjustments that are unavoidable with the coronaphobia crisis, as in the extra demands for social distancing, the lower expectations of, of public gatherings. Uh, people more inclined to work from home, lower demand for gas, lower, uh, they, they, they're going to be uh, less mechanics in a post coronaphobia world because there's going to be a lot less driving. There's going to be a lot less need for auto repairs. What happens to those guys? And those guys have jobs now, but they need to find new jobs. This is how economies adjust. This is how markets direct labor to go to, to so where there is demand now, 
let people go and work and fill that demand. When you stop that, you make the adjustment slower. That's what we're experiencing right now. If we go to this level, then I dare say that Bob Michelle is right. It would be 10 to 12 years if they engineer this. I think this is them getting too far ahead of themselves. I think this is the collapse right here in legislation. $120,000 or less, you get $2,000 a month or $4,000 a couple and $2,000 for each child of up to three. For anybody who understands economics, that's scary. And I'm not scared because I have a greater faith in humanity. I know we're going to be able to take care of each other one way or another. And like I said, I'm actually excited. The collapsitarian in me sees this and goes, yeah, now they've gone too far. Now they've overplayed their hand. And I hope that if we do go to this bifurcated economy, which in a sense, we're already in, I should rephrase my pr prediction. It's not that we're going to see a creation of a bifurcated economy. We have a bifurcated economy already, the black market and the white market. And it's really the black market and the red market, the one that's dominated by violence and blood, blood money. That's the red market, the legal market. It's the black market that is the peaceful one. And we are going to see one way or another a coming explosion of the black market. And I hope you find a way to participate. Thank <laughs> you.